this episode, we take a trip down memory lane. We'll go, on, go in. Are you sure it's the right one? How many megapixels does that one have, Roy? Megapixels, don't be bloody daft. It's for film, is that? Another photographer here. Who's this guy? I can't believe you're you're here. That took the picture and you focused with that one. I I I I I'm your biggest fan. They were beautiful cameras with those. Where do you attach the L bracket? I am the Irish Photography Podcast. Never heard of it. I'm gonna get some really nice light. If you control it still, you would bug it, lad. This is unbelievable. I'm in heaven right about now. Here are all these beautiful rocks in the foreground and you just see that the waves just crashing against them. This is shaping up to be my best shoot of the year. Hi, ah, megapixels. Right, let's go and look at some castles, eh? Oh, well, hang on a minute. Let's get this bloody seatbelt on. Which one is it? Right. The bugger won't go in. Jeepers. They don't make it easy for old folk, do they? Bloody hell. This one? Yes, that's the right one. It's right. got the right angle. Just put it in, isn't it? Christ almighty. It's not... Oh, Let Jesus. me hold it. Are you sure that's the right one? No, it's the other one. What a bloody performance. Where are these cars made? I'm choking myself on my bloody camera. Let's take this damn thing off a minute. Right. Oh. Right. That's the one you're aiming for. This one? Yeah. Right. The bugger won't go in. Are you sure it's the right one? Yes! Hey. hey! Yes, we're in, lad. We're in. Right. Right. Just in time for sunset. At this rate, I was beginning to wonder if we'd ever get that ferry to Ireland. Hey, Gavin, if, if you pull over just here, there's a museum here with a right good photography section, some proper cameras in there. Right. Just, here, just here, lad. Well, I do love looking at old camera gear. So we stopped off at the Dalbiti Museum, which had a delightful collection of old film cameras. That's Hasselblad. A bit different to yours, isn't it, eh? How many megapixels does that one have, Roy? Megapixels, don't be bloody daft. It's for film, is that? Megapixels. All this modern junk, I don't know. Yeah. By gum, hey, look at that. It was a sturdy camera, one of the best of its day. Yeah. But they are extremely expensive nowadays. But this was actually owned by Dalbiti's local gas company and they used it for taking photos of the meter readings. Now the story of how it ended up here is that one day one of the workmen dropped it and you'll find there's a bit of damage to the lens, it's a bit bent. Wow. It's imperceptible but it really yeah. messes up the photo and it's been sitting in here ever since. Ah, megapixels. What about this one then? Rolliflex, buy a gum. That were a camera in its day, lad. It was that. That took the picture. Yeah. And you focused with that one. Right. And you wound it on with this. Yeah. Cost a bob or two, didn't then. So, uh, is that where the megapixels are then, Roy? And, and then that's like just for focusing. You and your bloody megapixels. <laughs> no, film went in there. Yeah. Right. All right. A pack set. A little 35 millimetre camera. Look how small that is. And that great chunky thing you carry around with you. German. Yeah. German. Ah, they were quite popular just so after that the war. So that just be for taking pictures of squirrels or something? Squirrels? I'd take out with this, lass. What kind of image, sta image stabilisation would that have, Roy? <laughs> Your own hands. If you control it still, you would bugger, lad. If you were looking for something more James Bond, this is what you'd want. Wow, what is that all about? It is a tiny camera. Micro. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, as I was saying, these were made popular by James Bond films. Yeah. Because they saw, oh, tiny spy cameras, and then everyone had to have one. Ooh, I do like that, Roy. <laughs> yeah, ah, you slip in your pocket. Also got the more classic James Bond camera. Oh, aye. That's nice, isn't it? And then Roy found the Voigtlander. It's a superb lens on it. It's really solid construction, is that? They were beautiful cameras with those. Yeah. Uh, a, a poor man's twin lens reflex. Hey, there you are. There's your viewfinder. So that's how you compose your shot through there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where's the shutter button? Oh, there's your shutter button, presumably. Yeah. 
uh, and film. There's no digital nonsense about this one. Where do you uh, where do you attach the L bracket? The what? The L bracket for your tripod. Oh, oh, bracket. No, basic, simple. You know, that's an ensign full view. And you know that folding camera of mine, that uh, ensign, same make. Yeah, that's your viewfinder on top. Oh, I can just see you there, right? Yeah, yeah. Take a photograph of you. Oh well. We'll need some image stabilisation for that. I'll say. Might need a bit of noise oh. reduction and a beauty filter. <laughs> <laughs> so we get rid of wrinkles, lad, eh? Yeah. That that was the Japanese um, copy. Oh gosh, that's a blinking weight, isn't it? Hey, nice case on it as well. 635. Now, you could actually put 35mm film in this as well. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the same sort of thing, you know. Top one is your viewfinder, bottom one, yeah, takes the pictures and you adjust things with those knobs. But a lovely case on Beautiful. that. Yeah. That's right. a fashion piece, really. It's a, well, it, it was a good workhorse, was that? I mean, they weren't as expensive as the Rolliflexes, but they were a damn good copy. Japanese. And Corporal shutters, they made by a firm that makes eco cameras, uh, watches. With all of this camera talk, Mum and Amanda had fallen asleep, so I mentioned scones and that woke them right up. <laughs> now, I wonder what it would have been like vlogging with this camera. Anyway, time to get to that ferry. All right, can we get back on the road now, Roy? Jeez. Yep, go on, let's get to the Right, let's, uh, let's get on the road, eh? All right, just a minute, let's get this article on. Which one is it, us? Oh. Well then. It's not good in that. Are you sure we've got the right one? Oh, look, it's that one. Nice to all It's that one. Oh, it don't make these things well, folk, does it? Oh, look at it. That f***ing thing. Go on, Gavin, let's get on our bloody way. Oh. I'm not going to lie, I was getting a bit tense. This was going to be a long drive. Thankfully, the journey to the ferry wasn't too far. Thank you. We're going to Ireland. Naturally, we gobbled down a Tunnock's caramel log, and then it was time to board the ferry to the Emerald Isle. Right, so we've uh, we've made it onto the ferry, and I'm uh, quite excited. Maybe maybe two hours, and we'll be in Ireland. I'm quite excited, right? Right, Gavin. You see, here, this is land where we just landed. And there's a dual carriageway, and that's what we want to go on. And we come down here for a little way, and then it's a single carriageway, and we carry on down this road, down to it, and then there's a motorway. Right. And we want to... What? Right, we don't need that. We've got, we've got GPS. GPS? That's something to do with government financing. Did to deal with that. Come and look. I've got a good map here. I've been using maps for, what, 70 years now. So I know what I'm doing with these. It's the satellite navigation rights. We, we don't need the map now. And supposing that goes wrong, you're going to need a map then, aren't you? And this is what I've got. I know what I'm doing with these. All your fancy bloody technology as bad as your cameras is this job. Well, I mean, we're not going to get lost, right? It's, it's modern technology, you know, we, we, don't well, need, we don't need a map. Right then, if you get lost, see if you can find a phone booth. You know how to operate them, but put 2p in and ring your mum and she'll explain to you how to find us, all right? Yeah, all right. My mockery of Roy's map reading would come back to haunt me, which you'll see in a future episode, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on Roy's moment of righteous retribution. So after dropping the old folks off at the B&B, Amanda and I headed out for the sunset where hopefully there'd be no other photographers to cramp my style. All right, so we finally arrived after much faff. It's been a really long day uh, at this big old sea stack with a massive bloody great big hole in it. And, and I've wanted to shoot this for absolutely years. And I'm, <laughs> I'm rather excited to finally make it. Anyway, I didn't really see any other cars parked at the top. So I think 
I might have this whole place to myself. And if I do, <laughs> I might just get an absolutely tremendous shot, I think. Oh my God, I can see it now. Look at that. And I think I've got the, oh, for God's sake. Another photographer here. Who's this guy? I can't believe you're, you're here in this spot. I am your biggest fan. I, 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 I'm your biggest fan. I use you all the time to practice my composition. Yeah. All the time. And I can't, you're here in this spot and I'm here. Oh my well, you're here, aren't you? I mean, you're, how long have you been here? Uh, I just arrived. Yeah. What's your name? Darren. Darren. You and me were on my podcast. I am the Irish Photography Podcast. Never heard of it. Never heard. Yes. All right, do me a favor, right? Yeah. We're going to shoot this together, yeah? Looks like it. Ho -ho! Will you sign your book for me? You bought the book? Oh yeah, I almost have it. I use it for my composition yeah? all the time, man. And you just drag it around yeah. everywhere. You know, it's extra weight, but you know, it's worth it. Like, I'm your biggest fan, it man. It totally is worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll be, yes! I'll, I'll be happy to sign yeah. your book Let's for get you. this light. So Let's get down there, yeah. Maybe you're not too bad after all. Now it's absolutely vital whenever you're abseiling down very treacherous cliffs that you wear appropriate footwear. I love this kind of stuff. Absolutely beautiful. The waves aren't too crazy. So if they stay like this, I, I could get all kinds of slightly long exposures, super fast exposures where you freeze the splash in the air. All I need is the light. Now it would be even better if the tide just went out a little bit because I think the best angle of this, I mean this is pretty good here, but you can't really see that much of the hole. You see the hole there in the stack? Whereas if I go over there, where you can see those waves just gently crashing over there, then I've got a more obtuse angle. Is that, is that, is that the right word? But I can shoot through the arch and really open up the arch. So I, so I really want to get over there, but the tide needs to go out for a bit before I can do that. We'll see. And who knows what this light's going to do. I mean, way off in the distance, you see that lovely bit of contrast on the horizon over there. If I get any of that, even if it doesn't have color, just that contrast, I've got a shot. So I'm hopeful that I can make this work. If I don't get the shot tonight, I've got a full week to nail this shot properly. Single shot mode, no two second time or anything like that. And I'm shooting at pretty fast shutter speeds, like one two hundredth of a second. So I really, to be honest, I don't even need the tripod, but it's just nice to have it in place because I might end up bracketing this and blending this shot. So I'm just basically riding that shutter. And then when a wave comes in and splatters on these foreground rocks here, like that, and just kind of splashes in the air, then I get that frozen motion. Here we go, like that kind of thing. Oh, that was a good one, I missed that one. Here's what that kind of shot looks like, but I, I definitely want better light if I can get it. And like I say, I might then try another shot with a slower exposure, get a bit of motion blur just in the foreground there. So we shall see what happens, but and I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm gonna get some really nice light. It's fantastic, is this, David? Have you, have you been here before? Darren. No, my name's Gavin. My name's Darren. David. Darren. Brian. I what? I think we've done this before. Sa Brian? <laughs> this is unbelievable. So, I mean, when you stand here, it really opens up the hole, the, the arch. But with the sun being just over there, all of these rocks and pinnacles are catching that gorgeous side light. And when the waves come in, they're also kind of almost backlit slash side lit, and they have this beautiful glowing quality to them. And then when they splash, that's also backlit. So it's really, really contrasty against that absolutely amazing background. And I really love this, this cliff here, these beautiful striations in the rock. So I, I am in, I'm in heaven right about now. 
Oh, look at these, look at these waves coming in. So, oh, look at that. Absolutely magnifique. Well, let me get that. And, uh, but as you can see, the sun is about to pop right behind that massive, <laughs> that massive bank of cloud. So I, I think this might be it. This might be the best light that we see, but I'm, I'm going to stick around because this is, for me, this is as good as it gets. I absolutely love seascapes. This is fantastic. So I'm going to stick around, see what happens. You never know. It might just, as the sun goes down, it might just light up whatever is left and give it that lovely pink glow. And I wonder, I mean, the, the sun's going down there in the west. I wonder if I go a bit further around, I might be able to get a Milky Way shot. The Milky Way just behind the stack there. I don't know if I want to stay out that late because I am ex absolutely exhausted, but that would be a shot. Oh, is that David? I bet he wants me to sign his book. I mean, as long as he's paid for it, you know, I don't mind. Unless, unless he got it from a, a used bookstore, then he can bollocks. All right, so I'm doing the exact same thing that I was doing before. I'm just basically riding this shutter and waiting for the waves to crash. And then I'm trying to get them at that perfect moment there. There's another one that just splashed in there. And as you can see, hopefully with this, this camera, let me just point that right up. The sky is just starting to get a bit of a pink hue to it over there and over there. So <laughs> things are shaping up to be quite fantastic. Now, oh man, that's, that's got, I've just got to get that shot. I don't want to waste time showing you the back of the camera. Well, I'll tell you what, go on. I'll just flip it around and give you a quick look. So I'll just brighten this up. So there's the sea stacks. Here are all these beautiful rocks in the foreground and you can just see that the waves just crashing against them. And then if I just darken this down a little bit, you can see those beautiful pink clouds. I'm going to shoot that shot. So I'm just playing around with different shutter speeds. I'm trying um, super fast shutter speeds. I'm trying to drag the shutter by going down to ISO 50 and just tightening up that aperture. Oh, look at that. This is gonna be a, a hodgepodge of techniques. On oh, the birds are now all over the rocks. They might be cormorants, but you know what I mean? I'm not a bird expert, but oh man. This is shaping up to be my best shoot of the year. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely magnifique, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I would even say, Tres Megwafiqua, <laughs> it's that good. Anyway, if this shot turns out to be any good, here's the shot. Oh, Daryl, did you get a good shot? I did. Yeah? Yeah. Probably not as good as mine, though, eh? Well, if I'm looking in the back of that, I think I may have nailed a shot, yeah. Probably not that good, though. I mean... Well, it's nice, but you see, I've been here before. Oh, right, yeah. See, I know you're good. Some say you're great, but, you know, that's yourself. But, like, you can't really get a shot the first time. If you do, I'd be really, really impressed. Do you think you got a good shot? Yeah, I think it might it might even be bookworthy. <laughs> Cover? Well, I don't, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Not with my face on it, I would sell. It's selling certain shops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another wave. Let's get that shot. The action is unreal. I must say, you brought some phenomenal wave action with you. Well, I mean, you know, you probably wouldn't have bothered no. coming here if, if you didn't think there was a chance I would show up, would you? No, I sat at home knitting like I do every night. Yeah, exactly. But it's phenomenal. The wave action is unreal. These stacks are unreal. We didn't get major light, but I think you probably nailed it. That comp, to be fair. Oh, I, yeah, but to be fair, it's I did. Unreal. Oh, and man. You keep I, missing all the ones I mean, yeah, talking to me. You're <laughs> chatting. Right, I'm going to focus and get this shot. So this is a blue hour shot. And... Uh, if this one turns out to be any good, here's the shot. Now there's some 
something interesting that I want to show you. This is a raw file close-up of that rock you just saw in the middle of the frame. Now, look at the barnacles clinging to the rock. How fast do you think they move? Well, here's a frame from five minutes later, and you can clearly see that they've been wandering. And here's another frame from five minutes after that. So who knew that barnacles moved around in such a short space of time? Now, I'd love your opinion. I need to know which of these three images that I shot should be included in my next book. Pre-sunset, sunset, or blue hour. Post a comment, let me know which one is your favourite, and that'll really help me to decide which one to include in my next book coming out in 2024. Now, thank you. Well, that was an absolutely brilliant shoot. I'm so glad that I came and, and shot this. Did, did you get a shot, Daryl? I absolutely did. And you know, as you say, it's all about the light. It was really, really nice. Come here. Will, will you sign the book for me? You promised, yeah, yeah, yeah. You promised, yeah? Pass me chasing. That's uh, that's Quiet Light with Adam Gibbs. Aren't you Adam Gibbs? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a facelift. I look quite a lot younger and more handsome, but yeah, definitely. Um, but you know, it's a great book. as Adam Gibbs, you know, I, I think that you would probably really enjoy this other book, because if, if you enjoyed that, you know, if you want something that's just a, little, a cut above oh, that, right, okay, you yeah. will probably yeah, love look. this book by uh, Gavin Hardcastle. It's called Chasing Awe. Oh, yeah. I've heard of him. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's really Have you good. got that book too? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I just recommend that because he's a good friend of mine. So, oh, you know, like, okay. uh, yeah, you okay. should definitely, you should definitely buy that. You have sound at him, man. Thanks so yeah, much, yeah. man. Thanks. And I'll get that other book as well. It looks and sounds awesome. Get it, yeah. There's a link in the description below. Right, shall we bugger off?